Hey everybody. Okay, so we are back again with another What Sold video. We are looking at the week of August 28th through September 3rd. So again, just last week. And it was a fairly good, decent week in the reselling world. I hope yours was as well. Before I start, I just want to do a quick shout out. Um, I wanted to shout out Brianna who found my link down in the description for buy me a coffee and she bought me a coffee. So thank you very much. That beverage has already been consumed. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for supporting the channel that way. Anyway, we are going to start off by looking at um, eBay sales. And I would say looking at the list, eBay was um, like normal. It was kind of our, you know, our main source of reselling income this week. And it's not surprising because we did give it more attention. We've been upping our listings and mostly on eBay. Um, part of that is because my husband's been listing and he's been listing items that I'm not necessarily going to cross post over to Poshmark. Um, and we might cross post them eventually over to Etsy, but for the for now, it's just kind of a lot of tools and a lot of odds and ends that we've just been carrying around for a long time. And so um, they are just kind of perfect for eBay and we're just, and they're selling. So we're just gonna see how it goes from there. But we're starting with something I did find and uh, at the thrift store, I found this actually the day before I the day before it sold. So I found it one day, I listed it the same day and I sold it the next day and it's by Pampered Chef. Pampered Chef I uh, Pampered Chef items can be good ones to just double check. It seems like, you know, you might find like the bread tubes or things like that like at every thrift store, but I usually try especially if they're new in the package I try to look up all the little gadgets because there are still some gadgets that are discontinued and people really really like them so I happened upon this uh, cutting board and it was still sealed and so I thought you know what let me just check I'll look this up and it seemed to be have it it seemed to have a pretty good sell-through rate and everything and so I went ahead and did that and so I'm glad I didn't I think I had the only one that was sealed and um, possibly the only one listed at the time that was the large size because I think it came in a couple different sizes but it's just a a cutting board it's specifically for meat the cutting board is grooved sorry I'm trying to get down here and the lighting in my picture was not that great, but as you can see, it's a cutting board large with juice wells. So like I said, comps look good. And then as far as what I paid for it, I got home. I don't know what the girl charged me. She might've charged me half price that day, or I don't even know. I was trying to figure it out on the receipt. Sometimes the the thrift stores have those, you know, where they're, they don't really spell out exactly what the item is. And so I was trying to match it up. So I don't know what happened, but I didn't pay more than $5 for it. And I listed it for $55. And like I said, it sold the next day. So that was, I always love a quick, quick sale. Next one is a hat. Uh, found this at our little clearance bin center. And it was just sitting right on top. It was like it was brand new. Just got thrown on top of all the hats there at the clearance center. And so as usual, I just kind of paid pennies for it, less than a dollar for sure. It's a Cabela's hat, blaze orange. As you can see, it was really, really clean. Um, yeah, so we got that listed right away. It actually sold for $20, not 25. We either sent an offer or took an offer. Next up, Mountain Hardware. We talked about this brand last week. And I will, let me find the label here for you. Hopefully my internet is going to cooperate. Okay, so Mountain Hardware, if you remember, it has that little um, Bolt logo on it. And like I said last week, it does have a following. It has, you know, people who are loyal to that brand who, who like it and they're, 
you know, it's not going to be the highest selling piece of outdoor clothing that you'll come across, but it's decent. And this shirt was a nice flannel shirt. It sold for $30. We got really good feedback today. And um, the, the buyer said he was adding us to his favorites because he liked that shirt so much. So next up is a, just a little kitchen gadget. So this is interesting. This was another bins outlet find. My husband went by himself to the bins, came home with a bunch of stuff. And he had found these just little, you know, kitchen gadgets and just started listing them right away. And this sold for $25. So it's a dicer blade. It's a replacement part for something called a dice witch, I guess. And someone, I think, messaged whether it was sharp. We just said yes. And it sold for $25. So you cannot beat, you know, that return on investment. And honestly, I probably would not... I didn't do the comps on this one, so he might have seen comps that were that high or there just was nothing like it. So he listed it for 30 and took the $25 offer. So much better than I would have expected just by looking at it. This next one was something that I picked up at a thrift store. I just thought the name sounded interesting. It was in a box, like the box that it had been shipped in. So somebody had sent away for it and I looked inside, it looked like things were all there, and it was only $4. So I decided to take a chance on this. So what it is, it's called Hover, and this was the version I had. And basically you attach this under your desk, Hover with desk mount. You put your feet on those pedals, and as you're sitting at your desk, you can be moving your feet and getting exercise while you're sitting at your desk. And so I was joking that since I sit so much as resellers, I mean, there's times where you're up and down. I'm up and down taking pictures and moving around and things like that. But when it's listing time, then I'm just sitting. So I was like, well, maybe I should keep this. <laughs> but anyway, so I looked on the website. I saw that it was a real deal kind of thing. And we listed it for $50. And it, it took a few months to sell, so at first I thought I had kind of made a mistake, but it sold for $50 and it went on to its new owner. Next up is also a little, I don't know, something, like I said, my husband's cleaning out his, his odds and ends. Um, it was either that or it was from a yard sale or something like that, but this is something back in the day I would have picked up at a yard sale and put on Etsy for someone to use like for steampunk, you know, creation or something like that. So I, it definitely would have caught my eye someplace. Um, it didn't sell for $30, but it did sell for $20. We took an offer on that. And then another, this is the same day my husband went to the bins um, clearance center and picked up a couple tools, kitchen things, I should say. And so that Dicer attachment sold, uh, he got listed and sold, and then this sold really quickly as well. Um, I have sold these things before. They are called, the, the company is Edland. They're called Top Off, and it's like a jar or bottle opener. So you can attach it onto the, to your jar or bottle, and then you have a nice handle that helps you open it. I've sold these with plastic handles before and had done pretty good. And um, my husband cleaned the top. So you can see there's a little bit of rust. There's like wear. It doesn't really matter too much. He cleaned it up a little bit. And then, you know, a lot of times with older kitchen tools, people don't want pristine. They do want the the vintage item to look like it's vintage as well. So we were totally happy to get $24, $25 for that little gadget. Okay, so I just wanted to pop in here really quick and um, I was just thinking about cleaning that little kitchen tool that that I just mentioned. And one thing my husband told me when he was cleaning is that he likes to use this little brush to clean rust off of metal, things like that. So 
The bristles are copper and it's just a little cleaning brush that he uses. So I just thought I'd pass that tip along. He said, um, so that little jar off gadget thing that we sold, you could see there still was some rust on it, but he cleaned it up. You know, he cleaned it up quite a bit. We have a few other pieces, kitchen tools that, he, you know, he can use this on. And he says, this does really good as far as cleaning off the rust, but not um, taking off the chrome. Okay, so I just thought I would share that little tip. He said he also just had a leather camera bag and it had hardware and it had a little bit of rust or whatever on the hardware. And he said he used a little bit of Windex and a magic eraser and it like came right off. So that's tip number two. And I don't know, I usually use steel wool, so I don't know what the difference if the copper is better than steel wool, but this is something that he found that worked. And I saw that they do have a little pack of um, cleaning brushes on Amazon. I can link down below. Um, they have the copper ones and then some of the brushes have all different materials on here. So that's interesting. Anyway, just thought I'd pop in here and tell you that. Next up, Texas Instruments. Some of these graphing calculators can be really good money, not as high as they used to be. Um, this is not one of the models, TI-89. It's not one of the great greatest models. Um, but I think because we're going into school, um, that's why it's sold now. So it sold for $25. I think I paid about $3, $3 at a thrift store. I didn't really check um, the model numbers. I think it's the TI-84, there's like silver editions, there's ones that actually do sell pretty well. And I wouldn't pick this up again. It took a while to sell. And like I said, it only sold, I think, because we were going into back to school. Um, okay, so I'm trying, I was trying to remember where I picked these up, but I think they were part of, I remember being at a yard sale last year and picking up a few odds and ends of sewing tools and gadgets. It might even have been like a box of just different things. And so same thing, my husband's just kind of poking around in our unlisted items and just finding things that he can actually do fairly quickly and easily. And um, he listed these and they sold within a few days for $19. A pair of shorts, board shorts, swim, swim shorts. So end of summer, um, you know, I'm just, I'm ready. Anything summer related that didn't sell. I had gotten these listed earlier in the season. And, um, but anything that was, you know, hasn't sold by this point, I'm perfectly happy accepting offers. So I got an offer for $18 for these shorts. They are by Rain Spooner which you recognize the name from my Hawaiian shirt um, haul, but Rain Spooner, the designer, Dietrich Vares. I thought there'd be more interest in them, but eh. So anyway, 18 bucks. Now I know. And then another pair, a pair of shorts sold not long after that. Again, took an offer for $24. I'm sure $40 was just too high. Um, but we had them listed at the beginning of golf season and everything. So we got the $24 offer, which is probably where we should have been in the first place. And we went ahead and took that. Now here's another item. You know, the more my husband lists, the more I'm going to be sitting here doing my what sold videos going, I don't know what this is. <laughs> But anyway, this was not one of our items. This was something that was left in our rental when we moved in and we were just told by the landlord to do whatever with them. And so this was kind of nice. It didn't sell for 175. You can see a best offer was accepted of $125. So not bad for something that's just been sitting on a shelf in the garage, taking up some space. It's an antenna tuner. That's all I know. And, um, you know, I'm glad my husband's around to list those things. 
Then I asked my husband also about this light. I said, where did that come from? Because he did do a yard sale recently and I thought maybe it was some of the yard sale leftovers, but he said, no, this was something that's been in his um, stuff. You know, we both kind of like the idea of upcycling and so we do end up kind of picking things up along the way that my husband's like, well, maybe I'll turn this into a lamp or I'll do this or do that. And so at this point, he's he's just wanting to get some things cleaned out. So this uh, headlight or truck light or whatever you want to call it sold for $25. And then we sold, so we sold shorts. It's an interesting time of year. We sold shorts, but then we sold the Sherpa Western style vest. That one sold for $42. And the brand, as you can see, it's vintage pioneer wear. Um, from Albuquerque, USA, and it was leather. So again, this was something given to us as a garage sale leftover from our friends back in the spring. And that's, like I said, that sold for $42. So Western, you know, Sherpa, that's always going to have good things going for it. Next up, I probably shouldn't have bought these. I I don't know. I'm kind of a sucker for new old stock. If you've watched my channel, you kind of know that. And I do like when I notice when I notice vintage sheets still in the package, it always gets my attention. I just don't think the problem with these was that they were twin size and um they were pretty, but they just weren't like they're not super eye-catching. And I kind of priced each one out and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to lop these all up together. Someone else can either just have a nice little collection for a twin bed or they can, I don't know, whatever they want to do, use them for material or whatever. So I just lotted them up. I got a $33 offer and um, buyer, you know, buyer always pays shipping. And I was happy with that. I probably overpaid for these. And so it was not, you know, it was not my best flip of the week. But I'm glad they're moving on to someone who can use them. This I picked up at a thrift store not too long ago, maybe a few weeks. And they are little silicone. As you can see in the picture, um, it goes on the edge of like a camping cup. So when you're camping and you use those lightweight cups some, you know you you heat up the cup on top of the um, little burner or whatever and the cup can get really hot and so this is a silicone lip protector never knew they existed I just grabbed them because they were 50 cents and I thought either my husband will use them or I looked and they were selling and so we sold them for $13 the next two items go to this went to the same buyer and he just paid full price for both of them. Um, I've said before, I've showed you some of the men's ties that I've been selling. I've kind of dug into my stash and, and pulled out some of the, the real vintage ties that I have that are in fairly good condition. And just kind of started putting them on eBay instead of trying to worry about Etsy or Ruby Lane. And I'm actually very pleased with how well they've been selling. So... Like I said, the buyer bought this one for $25. This one was from like the 30s. And then he bought this one as well. It was a 1940s tie. And that one sold for $30. So this one, kind of like one I've sold in the last few weeks, it says resilient construction on it. And they stopped putting that on the label of these ties it says uh, in 1947 so it's always I've said this before but it's always nice when there's something specific that can help you date a vintage piece of clothing or a vintage item for that matter and then we sold another Tilly hat so I had found two Tilly hats at Goodwill and I knew the brand I knew it was a good brand to resell so I was super excited about that they sold for $50 each, one back in July, I think, and then one just sold this week. 
and here's the label it says this is a Tilly hat the best outdoor hat in the world so anyway it's got the care instructions all that kind of stuff so the two Tilly hats I had were two different styles but we're super happy to get $50 for each one. So Tilly, keep an eye out for Tilly hats. And then the last sale on eBay for the week was a tool. And same thing, Hubby is cleaning out some things. And he sold, this was a personal item. He, he had bought this new, used it a handful of times. And he said, honestly, he's probably considering the amount he used it, he probably got his money back from this. So you really can't beat that. Um, it sold for $175. So let's pop over to Poshmark. And we're going to start with an, a men's brand that you should know. So I had heard from, I think there's somebody I follow on Instagram, um, I think it's endless thrift. Anyway, he sells some men's clothing and and things like that. And so I've learned some some good men's brands to be on the lookout for. And this is one of them and I knew it to look for like in suits, like the the suits by I I think it's Isaiah. Um they can sell really well. So I was looking through shirts like I usually do, button shirts at Goodwill, and I saw the name so it's Gianluca Isaiah, um, and it's a just a plaid or kind of check um, button shirt. It was kind of long and a bigger size, 17 and a half and 44. Anyway, it actually sold. It got a lot of interest on eBay right away. I cross-posted it to Poshmark, and it sold for $26. Totally decent. Um, but yeah, if you ever come across that in suits or jackets, uh, it's definitely one to keep an eye out for. Next up, another brand I learned from other resellers. So while I always say if you're watching videos like mine or you're watching other people on YouTube, you, you'd have to take everything kind of, not with a grain of salt, it's not like I'm lying to you, but but a lot of it has to be based on your own experience as well and based on things that are available in your area. Um, but I do think there's value in watching those because there's been so many brands that I would not have known about or I would have had to stand there at the thrift store like looking up everything. And it just kind of saved me a lot of time. So I knew from, um, it was probably Kaylee Elaine because she does a lot of women's clothing. Um, that this brand, Jay McLaughlin, would be a good dress brand to keep an eye out for. So I came across this nice black, like sheath, little black dress. It was kind of had a tiered or layered look to it. And it didn't sell super quickly, but it did sell for $42. And considering, I'm pretty sure this was from Goodwill, so the dress would be like $7 at the most. So I was happy to get that for, to sell that for $42. And I would definitely keep my eye open for more Jay McLaughlin dresses. Another good brand to look out for is Fjall Raven. Here's the label. Okay. Um, outdoor clothing, a really good brand. Stuff sells super quickly. Um, this was just a basic kind of short sleeve button shirt, hiking, that kind of thing. And it did, I would say, within a couple days. I had it on eBay and Posh, and it sold on Posh for $33 very, very quickly. Now, Kate Spade, you know, I don't go on the lookout for it too much, Um but sometimes I just happen across it. So I'm pretty sure this bag was at, I think it was at Goodwill one day. And I could just tell the quality was really nice. And Kate Spade can be faked quite a bit. So you want to be careful. But 
Um, looking it over, I didn't see anything, any kind of red flags. It had the labels inside that it needed to have and everything like that. So I, again, it did not sell super quickly, but it sold for $50. Perfectly happy with that. I paid less than 10 for it. Um, but it was just a nice, real nice quality leather bag. That was a just, like you could do two straps or you could do a longer, like, um, crossbody length. Now there are other things that are just not worth my time. <laughs> and I have learned like, okay, don't pick, don't pick these things like things like this up again. I don't know. Circus by Sam Edelman, Sam Edelman in general. I don't know. I, I look things up at the thrift store when I see them and they don't seem like they're worth a lot. Um, I think I was in right in the middle of summer and I thought, Oh, these will be easy. They're in really good condition. They'll sell quickly and it'll just be a fast listing and a fast sale. And they were just kind of, eh. and then I just got a $10 offer and I took it. So it was just totally not worth my time to even do this. Um, so you can learn from me, you know, really double check comps and um, sell through rates of things when you're shopping at the thrift store, even because even though it's like, Oh, this is fast. This is easy. It still doesn't mean it's worth your time. We had another pair of shoes sell. This was these, I really like these. And if they had fit me a little bit better, I might've kept them, but the brand is Taos. Let's see. If I had a good picture of the inside, maybe not. Oh, but just like this. Okay, so it just says it there on the inside of the um of the shoe. Taos. And the, the style was called Salto. Anyway, these sold for $24. I do have another pair I picked up the other day. Um, I was just gonna sell similar off of this and um they're not the exact same style, but I was going to find it. But this was very encouraging to see that they did sell. And $24 was not terrible. Kenneth J. Lane. So KJL, I like to sell the jewel, his jewelry. And um, especially the vintage Kenneth J. Lane jewelry can sell really well. So when I happened upon this little purse or clutch, it... I don't know. It just kind of jumped out at me. I like the alligator, um, the bling on it, and it had a mirror that it came with inside, as you can see. And let's see. It was just signed right in here. And so it wasn't terribly vintage. Here we go, Kenneth Jaylene. But I just thought someone, someone's going to want this with the little alligator on it. And it sold to someone, I think, down south. So hopefully that's not because they have alligators in their backyard. <laughs> anyway, $35 for that. And then these Western boots I had picked up just because of the color. They weren't really branded. They were just made in Mexico. And the thing that was unusual about them is... Um, I looked this up, what this part of the boot is called. It's called a spur ridge, and it actually extended out pretty far. And I thought, oh, no. I got home, and I noticed it, and I thought, oh, no, I messed up. Something's wrong with these boots. But certain boots were just made in this style with the wider or the, the spur ridge that sticks out a little bit more. I don't know anything about it. Um, because we didn't really have a brand we kept the price low, right about $50, and I got a $42 offer on Posh, so I took that. Now, Nora Fleming. So if you remember, I talked about Nora Fleming in the video about brands, dinnerware brands that you should know, and that was one of the ones that I featured in that video. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video in case you haven't seen it. Anyway, Nora Fleming is definitely something to keep an eye out for. And not long after I did that video, I found my first piece of Nora Fleming. And that was this salt and pepper shaker set. Now, it did come with one of the little charms 
that you can interchange in the piece, but my little charm thing was chipped pretty badly. So I just kind of threw that in there kind of as a bonus, but my pricing was based just on the salt and pepper shaker set itself. And that sold for $45. And then just a quick uh, hat sale, Under Armour uh, camo, scent control beanie hat, whatever. Again, we just picked up at the, we either picked that up at the bins or at Goodwill. I'm thinking it was, I don't know. See, I can't remember now. I usually only buy my hats two different places. But anyway, it sold for 15 I asked my husband, I said, it's 15 too low for this. He's like, nah, it's all right. So Again, sometimes it's just cash flow and moving things through. Crimson Clover or, yeah, I was going to say it's not Crimson and Clover. I think it's just, it's Crimson Clover. So I had come across somewhere in my to-do pile, my profit pile, I have a Crimson Clover wool sweater that I need to list. And I had come across it, I think at a yard sale. I looked up the brand and saw that it was something that people definitely buy. I'm thinking it's a Colorado brand, um, but you know, a very like ski, ski sweater type look for it, for the, the sweater that I found. And so that's in my to-do list. Well, then I came across this skirt at Goodwill and I saw Crimson Clover and I'm like, oh, that sounds familiar. But then I saw that it was new with tags. And I thought, oh, well, that's kind of a no-brainer. So I went ahead and got that. It had all the information on it, of what kind of skirt it was and everything. And it's merino wool. And this cute little skirt that I paid $5 for or less sold for 36 Okay, we're on to Etsy. And I'm really excited about this because I, I, anyway... This is my husband's shop, but I um, found these posters. I got to show you this one, and I got to show you the next one. So we have simile and metonymy. Okay, so they're parts of speech. I had found three posters at a yard sale, and it cracked me up because it was like in a barn in the middle of Montana, and there were these vintage mid-century big school posters, education posters. Now, this one I was so tempted to keep because the graphic on it was, I just love that graphic on it. Um, but I don't have a place for it. I don't have a reason for it. So this was either last summer or the summer before we found these posters. And I know I paid $5. I don't think it was $5 a piece. I think it was $5 for all three posters. And I was like, oh, somebody's going to want this. Well, I put them in my Etsy shop. And I did find some comps, I think, on eBay, like, a long time ago. Anyway, they just were not, like, something flying out the door. So I think we had them on eBay. We had them on Etsy and nothing, like, hardly any interest. And I just kind of, you know, forgot about them. But then um, my husband was getting his Etsy shop going again. He's like, you know what, let's move them over to my Etsy shop. Because, as you know, my Etsy shop doesn't have the vintage in it anymore. And I just, Ruby Lane was just going to be too probably small of an audience for these. So they've been listed and I'm just like, whatever, haven't really thought about them much. And then I was out and about this weekend and my husband texted me and he's like, did you see my Etsy sale? And so a woman bought two of the posters. So she bought that one and that one for $45 each. So $90 and I'm so happy. And all I can picture is that this is a teacher who's decorating her school room for the new school year. And that's exactly what I had wanted to happen. And um, I think the woman who uh, sold them to me at the yard sale, she was a teacher as well. And she found them in the school. Um, I think some old closet or something had gotten cleaned out. And these were like from the six, like 1969. And so she kind of rescued them. So I just thought that was awesome. And I was super, super happy 
these finally sold and it it paid off so okay and then the other Etsy sale I had was just this sewing pattern I did list a few patterns this past week and this was one of them and so it sold very quickly for 19 uh, is this 19 oh you know what okay this was actually sold for $15 so um, yeah so Etsy has an option that you can add as you can see here the make an offer button to your listings and I do have that enabled in all of my in my pattern shop I've had one person use it and the first time they used it it was a it's a beta type thing where where Etsy was trying it out and they had it so wacky it was set up so wacky and so they had it so that the um the person if you accepted an offer the person could have like a month to accept your offer it was so crazy and so the woman accepted my offer like three weeks later and I had totally forgotten about it by that point and so I was like what in the world is this discount it was so confusing well they have changed it so the person now has 48 hours to accept your offer or not so the woman offered me $15, I accepted it, and she she went ahead and paid right away. So anyway, that sold for $15, just that's the story behind that. And it doesn't show on the sold page, go figure. Okay, and then Ruby Lane, this was a nice little sale I started the week off with. I had these little figurines, so they're made in Denmark, Hillstead, and this was a walrus, and the the polar bear and baby polar bear all together. So the woman, my, the customer bought all three figurines together. So $38 and then also $28. I did have to refund some of her shipping. She just went ahead and, and just paid and um, it what didn't cost as much. She was in Canada. So I refunded some shipping and then um, I was just super happy about that because I, I couldn't resist these at the thrift store, but then even at the thrift store, I knew comps, they just not as super sought after. People just weren't looking, and I just thought, well, somebody's going to want them someday, and they're made in Denmark, and I can't resist anything made in Denmark. And so I have, I've had them on Ruby Lane for a while, and I was just so thrilled that somebody bought all of them at once. So that made my day. Then, something unusual, I have two sales on Mercari to share with you. Um, we have our love-hate relationship with Mercari. Um, my husband's like, oh, I'm, not, I'm just going to stop selling on there. I don't like it. Um, anyway, I had heard that book lots can do a little bit better on Mercari than some other places. And I had, we were cleaning out my kids' books and... You know, I'm not looking to make a ton of money. I'm just, you know, I usually thrift their books and I just kind of want to get a little bit of that money back again. That's all I was really looking for. So I, we had them on, you know, eBay. We had them on Posh. I sold a few little books on Poshmark, but the bigger lots of books, you can't go over the five pound label or if you do, you have to pay for it. And so it's not worth it. So I thought, you know what, I need to put some other things on Mercari, so let me kind of get the, the account going. I'll add some things to it and see how it goes. So we sold this little lot of kids' books, of Bear Grylls books, um, for 20 bucks, And then this lot of Geronimo Stilton books as well for $25. So same thing, just kind of getting a little bit of money back. And they actually, they sold, whereas they wouldn't, they didn't sell any on any of the other platforms. <laughs> so you just never know. Anyway, those were my sales for the week. And I will have another video out for you this week. I promise, promise, promise. I know I said that last week. And last week, life just got in the way. So that just happens sometimes. But I do have another video or two coming out later this week. So hope you guys had a great week. Go ahead, leave me a comment below about anything that you want to share about your past week in reselling, have sales picked up, 
Um, have you found anything good or what was your best sale of the week? So feel free to leave a comment and we will talk to you later.